everyone, this is Kazuya. In a previous video, we have learned that there is a critical period when you can actually hear any kind of sound contrast possibly existent anywhere in this planet. So therefore, you can be a native speaker of Japanese, German, English, or Chinese, you can name. After first year, your L1 phoneme is available. And you will basically be fine-tuned to one particular language, becoming a native speaker of that language, depending on which language your parents are speaking. So we talked about the beginning of the first language acquisition process. So now let's talk about the end of the first language acquisition process. In other words, how long does this first language acquisition journey continue to take place? And answering this question is quite relevant to a lot of like controversial issues in the field of second language acquisition. Therefore, let's discuss this issue first and then come back to the literature in second language okay. acquisition. As I just said, the critical period ends somewhere around six months for vowels and eight months for the uh, consonants, right? And afterwards, as I said, you will zoom in on one particular language. So that's the beginning of first language acquisition. So how long does this continue? And when does the first language acquisition end? Actually, the answer is that the first language acquisition will never end. As you can easily tell, let's say you, you were born in the UK and you grew up there, but you decided to go to college in the US and you started hanging out with the friends who speak American English, then your English becomes more and more American and less and less British, right? So depending on your linguistic environment, the way you use your language is always changing. But let's look at some unique research evidence coming from L1 acquisition literature showing that perceptual representations are actually subject to further refinement and throughout the childhood and all the way up to adolescence. So what this means is that the first language phonemes become available, but at the very same time, they're not that stable yet, meaning that they still need to be able to hear consonants and vowels produced not only by their parents, but also by their friends and other family members and, and so on. And also because they're learning more and more new vocabulary items, they should be able to hear their L1 sounds in different vocabulary lexical contexts, right? And finally, this point is most relevant to second language acquisition, but then toddlers are, should be able to hear their language, not just under very quiet conditions, but also under very noisy conditions, such as department stores, restaurants, and so on. But this also means that they should be able to ignore all the noise, even including a foreign sounds that don't matter for their first language phonetic systems. And this process, as I said, will continue up to puberty. And according to research evidence, basically the system becomes more stable and robust. In terms of vowels, research has also shown that they will become more adult-like around 9 to 10 years old. And when it comes to consonants, performance become quite mature around 14 to 15 years old. So far, we have been talking about monolingual family where parents actually speak exact same language, right? So let's just talk about the bilingual families where moms and dads, they, they speak different languages to, to their kids. So in, in this case, how about the critical period? So when does this end? Basically, it really depends on how much mother and father speak their own mother tongue to their kids. And if it's a completely equal, basically simultaneous bilinguals, Teresa Kuhl has pointed out the possibility of two mappings, basically two different sound systems, two different languages can coexist in a harmonious way in the brain. But, uh, but it's more likely that one language may win over the other. So in the end, kids' phonetic system will be probably influenced more by the dominant language than less dominant language. But in the end, the, this end of the critical period or duration of the critical period is actually quite flexible depending on uh, their linguistic environment. So let's move on to the conclusion. First language acquisition, the critical period, basically when you can be a native speaker of any language on this planet, so language generality, this ends in first year infancy. So six to eight months afterwards, your first language acquisition starts. And then this will continue to happen, making the system more generalizable, robust, all the way up to puberty. Throughout this process, because your L1 is becoming stronger and stronger, this will obviously make more influence if you try to acquire any additional languages. Therefore, this has a lot of implications for second language acquisition research. 
So first of all, this progressive influence of L1 system on the any additional languages will probably explain very well why younger is better when it comes to second language acquisition. Because if you start learning second language earlier age, that means that your L1 is less developed, meaning that you will be subject to the less amount of L1 influence. It's very important to remember that the first language acquisition process, the majority of it, will continue to happen all the way up to puberty. And afterwards, though, you should really think about what is the nature of language learning? Because the, uh, the very much implicit nature of first language acquisition process is kind of fading away around puberty. Do we need to think about different account of language um, learning? The Insights from first language education also have pedagogical implications. So it's very important to remember that the critical period ends so early, first year in infancy. Afterwards, you won't be able to become native speaker of various languages. Therefore, now let's think about this. Is it actually important, realistic, possible, or even necessary to actually encourage students to attain native like second language proficiency, especially when it comes to pronunciation? <clears throat> and because as I just hinted, that there, there may be a possibility that the nature of language learning may change, especially after puberty, when the first language acquisition process is almost fading away. Do we need to reconsider syllabus? Should the second language syllabus take into account the different nature of learning patterns, explicit versus implicit? That's it for now. So in the next video, based on these insights from first language acquisition literature, we'll finally move on to the second language acquisition research.